Okay, I've said this before, actually many times, uh, if you're looking for speed, 3D printing is probably not your right hobby. That said, I did want to run some experiments with uh, higher speeds on my uh, C3D BD, the Big Delta, that you might have seen in my previous posts or maybe even at some of the shows that I presented at. So in this video, what I am doing is I am actually testing with four different speeds. Actually, I did uh, five tests, but we'll get to that later. Um, running at 80 millimeters per second, 160 millimeters per second, 240, and then uh, 320 millimeters per second. All of them worked fine to start off with, but I did learn a couple of interesting, well, I kind of knew that already, but the actual speed is not indicative of how fast you're printing. It's a combination of speed, acceleration, and jerk. Now, in the test cases that I'm running here, uh, the 80 millimeters I'm running at 1200 millimeters per second, the uh, 80 at 3000 millimeters per second, the uh, 240 at 4000 millimeters per second, and then I did run a test of 320 at 4000 millimeters per second, but that actually showed almost no difference in printing time between the 240 and the 320. So the last one I did again, ramping it up to 6,000 millimeters per second. And even then you will find that the first print, which is printing at uh, 80 millimeters per second took about 22 minutes. The uh, fastest one at 320 millimeters per second, I think took about 11 minutes or 12 minutes. So there's no uh, direct, uh, you know, correlation between double the speed, double the printing time. That is not how it works. That said, it's still a pretty interesting uh, experiment. And this one, what I did is actually, I did start the first layer all at the same speed. So it got a good bed adhesion. So it was still a pretty, like I think 40 millimeters per second for the first layer. Um, and I left most of the slicer settings the same as, you know, for the out, outer perimeter, I print at 20. Uh, sorry, 50% of the actual speed. And then uh, I did have to change the uh, small perimeter to actually print at a higher speed because there's a small perimeter in this print that actually goes very slow if you keep it at the settings in Slicer. As you can already see in the video, they're all rocking right now. Uh, the 80 and the, the, the 160 are still working on the earlier layers, whereas the 240 and the 320 are now uh, actually at the infill and the perimeters and you can see already how fast that is going I'm not going to go through the entire video so I won't bore you with that I will fast forward this to the point where the first print is done uh, which would be the uh, 320 millimeters per second And there we go, 9 minutes and 22 seconds. The fastest print is done, uh, which is a little less than half the time of the slowest print. So even though we're doing four times the speed as the printer speed, which is really, you know, quote mark printer speed, while the slow print only takes 22 minutes. All right, we will fast forward again from this point on. So now we're getting to the 1038 mark, and that's when the uh, the second fastest print, the 240 millimeters per second goes. So that's only a two minute difference there, even though uh, there's like a, well, it's almost close to 25%, I guess. But So that one's done. I'll fast forward again. All right. And here we are at the uh, 1733 mark where the um, 160 millimeters per second print is finishing up. And the 160 and the 80 millimeters are way more representative of their actual speeds because the acceleration can uh, easily catch up uh, to those maximum speeds set there. Whereas for the 320 millimeters per second due to acceleration, even at 6,000 millimeters, uh, the print is really too small to um, reach maximum speed in most of the cases. It hits 320 a couple of times, uh, but uh, the majority of the time it's printing below that. Now you might say, why do you not do a bigger print? Because then you can easily reach the speeds 
uh, of the maximum speeds uh, with acceleration. I would love to, but I don't want to rip my printer apart. If you look uh, at the, uh, the print, this is the printer that actually has a moving bed. So there's a couple of grabbers that are in between the belts. And my fear is that if I run this at 320 millimeters a second with large distances, uh, if the belt actually swings and grabs onto one of those grabbers, it might rip things apart. So I don't want to. <laughs> So, and the slowest print is still going at 19 minutes, which I think is like around the same time a Benchy might finish up. So it might be interesting to run this whole test with the Benchy, but uh, who knows, maybe. So I'm going to fast forward this again. Okay, at this point all the prints are done and I'm showing you the actual uh, five tests that I did. Um, and I don't know if the zoom will actually, it's not very accurate, but... Um, they are almost practically the same in quality of print. And I think a lot of that has to do because I'm still abiding by some of the uh, printer settings in Slicer to slow down the outer perimeter. So even though it might get messed up on the inside a little bit, although I don't think it did, it still looks great on the actual outside. So again, there was two tests of 320. I did one of them at 4,000 uh, uh, millimeters per second and one of them at 6,000 millimeters per second because the 4,000 millimeters per second, simply the acceleration wasn't high enough to catch up to the speed of 320 millimeters. But if we look at the actual prints themselves, uh, they're practically the same. Uh, at the 320 level, there were a few uh, under extrusions uh, where the actual perimeter starts, um, but even those were almost negligible. There's a bit of a more rippling in the uh, sides when you get to the higher speeds but even that was um, uh, even at the, the the worst rippling it still looked like a pretty decent print so all in all uh, pretty happy with all four speeds so there you have it if you like this video give me a thumbs up subscribe um, next project well, first of all, uh, you will be able to see this printer at the uh, Maker Faire in Milwaukee in September and at the East Coast Rep Rep Festival in October this year. So hopefully I will see you there. Um, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and look out for the next video is coming up. And have a good day. Bye.